Hello, and welcome back to The Nook, and welcome back to Knowledge Quest, the series in which I document my projects for my MA Visual Communication course and take you along with me on the knowledge questing journey. Today's quest is going to be a short one because I technically had one week to do it, but as of filming right now, I have one day. Tell me you're a student without telling me you're a student. So in class, we had a lecture about narrative in visual communication and advertising and all that. And we've been very heavy on the subject of cultural context and context in general when it comes to communication. We, uh, we talked a lot about referencing, how you can use an existing piece of work and rework it and remix it so that it can have new meaning that's more appropriate for a new audience and for that to work it relies on the audience having an existing base knowledge of that original image you know you can't understand what's the subversion if you don't know what the real thing is yeah you done what toilet yeah yeah cool why recording oh. <laughs> sorry Anyway, <laughs> task for the lecture is for us to all go away and make a piece of work in our specialism. In my case, it's an illustration. And then we'll all put all of our work on a USB and we'll show it on the screen in the class without any context or titles or captions. And the rest of the class will have to try to decipher what the image is about. The idea is a successful piece of visual communication will be able to understand its audience and understand what is the baseline knowledge of its audience and therefore pull references that an audience will understand in order to communicate the message. Obviously, we're not really expected to nail it as in like every single person who sees the image will just immediately know what the image is about because different people have different baselines in terms of knowledge. It is especially hard if we consider that our class will be the target audience because our class is actually quite diverse and made up of people from a variety of backgrounds. There are quite a few Chinese students who have just left the country for the first time so they will have very limited knowledge for things that a British person might consider obvious and likewise a British person might not at all get a reference that will immediately be recognizable to a Chinese person so it's not a get a message across or die kind of situation it's try give it a go see where you end up I at the stage of about two hours ago had two ideas the first is I'd like to rework this uh, Voltaire illustration that I made a while ago. If you've seen my nips video, you would recognize it. It's the image that I used to demonstrate the nips. And I think the idea of the sword in the nip is a strong one, but I think the elaborateness of it kind of detracts from you being able to see the sword negative cut out clearly. So I think if you render it in a more graphic style, the image and the message will come across more strongly. So that's the first idea. And I like it. It's bold, it's graphic, and it's straight to the point. But my problem with it is we're also supposed to write 200 words about the image. And I don't know if I can write 200 words about this thing. It's, it's, it's almost too simple. <laughs> and the second idea is slightly riskier because it relies on the audience knowing about the story of the yellow wallpaper. Now, this would be fine if I'm aiming for a purely British audience because I think the yellow wallpaper was assigned reading in GCSE, so I assume that most people in the UK would have read the story or would at least be aware of it since it is a classic. But I don't think that uh, a lot of the international students will be aware of it, so this is riskier because I don't know if knowledge of this reference is a baseline in my audience but if i pretend that i'm making this as an editorial for the guardian then i can get away with it 
I'll include that in the write-up. And I know that Rob, the course leader who set this task, said we weren't supposed to discuss this project and the process of it with anyone before presenting it in class because that's the point, to present it with zero context. Sorry Rob, and I know you're watching this, but I ran it by Becky, who was very helpful. The other idea I had was um, to do a piece about um, the yellow wallpaper and mental health because you know the story of the yellow wallpaper, I assume. So I thought, um, why not do it? Because with changing attitudes about mental health, we now no longer view mental health as something to, well, the, the goal is to no longer view it, uh, view it as something to be locked away. And it's a lot with mental health is um, chronic, so people have to live with it every day. So I thought it might be cool to do a piece where the two women both outside and inside the wallpaper are just living together and having a conversation with each other and that's the and that's the that's the piece now i know i said the whole point of this exercise is to deliver a piece of visual communication without context and hope that the points still get across but you guys the audience of this video would probably benefit from some context <laughs> so here's a quick lowdown on what is the story the yellow wallpaper all about the yellow wallpaper is a short story by american writer charlotte perkins gilman written in 1892 the story follows a woman who was diagnosed with hysteria and was prescribed an isolation wellness retreat by her own husband. The woman sees another woman, feral, and trapped behind the yellow wallpaper of her confinement, but her husband continuously dismisses and gaslights her until the day the woman behind the wallpaper finally broke free. The two women became one, crawling all over the body of the husband, who fainted from shock. The story touches on many things and is now seen as an iconic work of feminist literature. For this particular illustration, I want to focus on using the motif of the titular yellow wallpaper as an icon for the stigma of mental health. In the story, the wallpaper represents how the main character's mental illness is seen as something to be ashamed of, to be locked away and pretend never existed. The story was inspired by Gilman's own experience with such an isolation treatment, and she claimed the success of the story prompted her own doctor to stop prescribing the treatment. Do you think that would yeah. that be a stronger one to go with? Um, yeah, um, you know your t-shirt, you know the top you've got on. Willow well, Morris? <laughs> um, I th think he was one of the first to like say nature is politics which i think is very interesting yeah, yeah but that's what i was like thinking in that like in this original yellow wallpaper story the yellow wallpaper represented like a barrier and a cage and whatnot but also i thought yeah bringing in that william morris and socialist ideas would also be because would also be interesting like as a subversion as you said because wallpaper is something you live with every day and so it's the idea of like living so you if you have to live with this thing then maybe instead of you think viewing it as a cage sort of viewing it as something that is just a part of your life and you're interacting with it and make the wallpaper interactive between the characters instead of being a barrier in between them i really like the idea of bringing in william morris because not only does it add another reference and add another layer to the symbolism of the image it also helps because I only have a day to do this and I was kind of stressing out over having to design a super complicated um, wallpaper and now I don't! Now I know at this point I already struck out the Voltaire idea but I thought I'd just render it really quickly as a small little thumbnail just to get out of my system and also because I was quite curious as to how it would look and I think I was right. The idea for the Voltaire image definitely comes across more strongly as a more graphic image but also yeah it's quite straightforward I don't know what else to say about it which is good because it's meant to be straightforward um so yeah Something just doesn't need to be overworked, you know? Anyway, on to the main course. As I said in my discussion with Becky, 
in the story, the wallpaper represents the stigma that society places on mental illness about how it is something you need to be ashamed and lock away and bottle up until one day when you can't do that anymore and everything just comes spilling out and the feral, you know, scary mental illness side of you just come ripping out of that cage and take over and turn you quote-unquote savage. That is not how we view mental illness anymore in our current 2021 society. Or at least, we aim to no longer see it that way. There's an increasing understanding that some mental illness are chronic, and it's not something to be ashamed of and hide away, it's something to live with, the same way a wallpaper is something you live with every day. This is where William Morris comes in. I discussed William Morris in my previous Knowledge Quest video, but essentially in a nutshell, he was a socialist first and designer second. His work was all about bringing nature back into everyday life to combat what he saw as the detrimental impact of industrialization on the common people's morale. Morris viewed his elaborate wallpaper designs as bringing nature back into the industrialized city spaces to improve mental health. This take on wallpaper is almost the exact opposite to that of the story, in which it is the intricateness of the yellow wallpaper that made the main character felt this increased sense of claustrophobia and being trapped in. To quote the text itself, I never saw a worse paper in my life. One of those sprawling flamboyant patterns committing every artistic sin. It is dull enough to confuse the eye in following, pronounced enough to constantly irritate and provoke study, and when you follow the lame, uncertain curves for a little distance, they suddenly commit suicide, plunge off at outrageous angles, destroying themselves in unheard of contradictions. The color is repellent, almost revolting, a smoldering, unclean yellow, strangely faded by the slow-turning sunlight. It is a dull yet lurid orange in some places, a sickly sulfur tint in others. No wonder the children hate it. I should hate it myself if I had to live in this room long. It's this juxtaposition that I think would make for an interesting subversion when we combine the two. So, transforming an elaborateness that was claustrophobic in the original story into an elaborateness that is meant to be freeing and calming. In this way, the wallpaper still come to represent mental health. It's the same color, the same elaborate viney design, but it's how we view it and interact with it that makes all the difference. So yeah, that's the concept. I ended up rendering the main elements of it in watercolor because I want to emulate that kind of modern flat editorial style of illustration and then go into Photoshop to add in the William Morris wallpaper into the background. Quick note, it's been a while since I've done watercolor and I suddenly remembered why. It's because, you know how people say things always get ugly before it gets pretty? Well, watercolor is definitely that, but the ugly face just seems to last forever before things start looking remotely good, so it was um, a very frustrating couple of hours. <laughs> Now when it comes to which Morris design I want to choose, I know I wanted a monochromatic one as opposed to his more colorful designs for obvious reasons. I wanted to make it yellow. I also know I want one that is only flora, no fauna, so no strawberry thieves, so the focus can stay on the main character's state of mind by herself, not distracted by other living creatures. Larkspur was a contender, but Ultimately, I went with Marigold. Incidentally, the same pattern that I was wearing on my shirt when we were talking with Becky. <laughs> I like it because it's a depiction of the marigold flower, so it adds an extra layer of yellowness, which is the kind of subtext I like and appreciate.
So, you're all probably wondering, how did it go? When you presented it in class, did they get it? Well, I made some notes. <laughs> when presented without context in class, people saw the cozy vibe immediately, which is good. People recognized William Morris and deduced his importance due to how much space the composition dedicated to the wallpaper. It took a while and a fair bit of prompting for people to arrive at the yellow wallpaper story, so not many people have read the story as I suspected. But those who did recognize that did gleam that the point is about mental health. Some additional feedback which I did anticipate was that this piece would probably be better as an editorial illustration, you know, as part of an article, so you would have like a headline and have the rest of the article to accompany it. So I think it would work better as an accompaniment to a text rather than an image by itself, which I did anticipate. I did design it with an editorial in mind, as I mentioned. I think earlier in the video, I kind of saw it as like a Guardian editorial illustration. And when I brought that up, Matt questioned if the Guardian usually go for more graphic illustrations. I wasn't sure at the time, but upon further investigation, my answer is... No. <laughs> the Guardian goes for colorful work, for sure, because you want to stand out in a sea of visuals, but not strictly graphic, especially if you go for lifestyle or culture or art or design columns, then they normally want a more handmade feel, you know what I mean? So to prove my point, I mocked it up. This was just a quick Photoshop job I did over an existing Guardian article about yellow wallpaper. Ideally, I'd wanted to accompany something like the yellow wallpaper, how attitude towards women's mental health has changed since the 19, I mean, 1890s. The Guardian Online favors landscape or square images because it's designed to be viewed on desktop. So I cropped the illustration to a square as landscape would require losing too much of the wallpaper. I think it works decently and fits well with what the Guardian normally goes for with mental health stories. Then I thought, it's not quite good actually. You know what? Fuck it. Go big or go home. So I mocked it up as my dream job. Ta da! <laughs> so, yeah, unlike The Guardian at all, it is not at all ambiguous that The New Yorker likes illustration. The New Yorker is like the pinnacle of editorial illustration job. If you made it on the cover of The New Yorker magazine, you've made it as an illustrator, essentially. And um, I'm surprised at how good it looks as a New Yorker cover. The pattern-filled negative space looks like it was designed to accommodate the New Yorker logo. And I just think it looks really good. Maybe, maybe I should tweet this at them. New Yorker, call me. Maybe in a year's time when I'm allowed to work professionally, so. In a year's time, call me. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. I hope you enjoyed the process of this project. Did you get what I was going for? Would you have done anything differently? What would you have done presented with this kind of task? And yeah, do all the usual YouTube thing, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next knowledge quest. Bye.